Hello, this is Alex Nicholson Ward here. Um, I'm doing another tutorial today of a uh, watercolour painting, and this watercolour painting is going to be of St Catherine's Chapel in uh, Abbotsbury, which, in, which is in Dorset um, in the UK. Now, it's quite a while since I've done a, a previous tutorial. I did Litchfield Cathedral last time, another church building. So I've got the pencil sketch here. Um, quite loosely done. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a spray bottle and I'm just going to spray the whole image to so get it completely uh, damp all over, like so. It's probably too damp, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, I'll go through my list of sort of materials as I go, but I'm just going to start off with a wash of colour. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to get some uh, cobalt blue. And I don't want this to be too blue a sky, but I'm going to start off with some cobalt blue running at the top. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Now, then I'm going to get some brown and mix it in a bit with the cobalt blue to get some grey. Just to be clear, this is a burnt sienna probably a slightly better or a slightly more useful term than brown um, and I'm just going to dab that around that's a quite dark so I'll get a bit more blue in there bring down some blue and bring some a bit more blue there yeah, that's all right and this will dry a lot lighter and a bit more blue again towards the horizon, suggesting some kind of, you know, not completely picture perfect day. Now it's bleeding into the um, into the chapel itself. Doesn't really matter. Now I'm going to get some yellow ochre and maybe some raw sienna. Okay, again, this is just for a light wash. Now it does not matter that the sky is bled into the building. In fact, the, the fact that it has bled into the building will add a bit more softness. So I'm just going to cover it in, this is quite a, a small image, so I'm just going to cover the entire thing in this one colour, maybe a little bit of, uh, you know, I could add in a bit of uh, burnt sienna as well, some points, like so. Now for the grass below, I'm going to mix some yellow ochre and a bit of um, cobalt blue because actually what I don't want is I don't want too vivid a green really. I want something, yes, now I'm going to add a bit of yellow that to lighten it up a tad. Okay. There we go. Now you'll notice I haven't covered the, the uh, I haven't covered up the figures. I've just covered them in paint. Uh, the buildings there, the skies there. The strongest part of the image is the this cobalt blue at the top. Now, to be honest, well, I've tried to go for a slightly more cloudy texture. You have still got the element of brightness. Now, the reason I've gone that I want it to be bright still is because the building's going to be cast in a lot of shadow. So that's what I'm going to be adding in a moment. But first, I'm just going to get my hair dryer. Just give it a quick dry. So hopefully I should be able to get the audio down again. Right, and as you can see, as I have, uh, you know, made it very damp and I've just dried it, what you tend to get is you then tend to get uh, the paper buckling a tad. Actually, that doesn't really matter, okay? You can flatten it out easily um, after it's dried anyway. So um, I can talk about that in another video. So now we've got our building here. Now, what I need to do is, I could intensify the colour a bit um, of the building, but actually I don't want to do that. I quite like how light it is. I'm going to do the roof next. That's what I'm going to paint. So I'm going to get some um, cobalt blue and some burnt sienna. I'm going to try and get a brownie grey and maybe a tad of raw sienna as well. Yes, I'll go for that sort of colour. Now, I want to imply... 
I can, some level of the uh, roof tiles as well. So I'll just, I mean, I don't have to be super neat about it. You don't, that's the, the beauty of watercolor. You don't have to be super neat. You can be a little rough here. Okay, and it doesn't really look perfect, but you get the idea. Okay, and a bit of the roof poking through there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close those ends off as well. So you just get the idea. I mean, it's literally a few seconds. I think it's a, a little dark at the bottom. I could take up a bit of paint there. So all I've done is there is dried my brush a little and picked off a bit of paint, because I don't want that to be too I don't want that to be the darkest element in the picture. I'm going to be adding shadow to it anyway. Um, now, some other areas, there's a little bit of roof implied. we got here. So again, just very, very straightforward. Now, you've got these bits of panels of roof as well. Um, you know, these little, again, tile areas, mixing the same sort of colour. It's almost a, a greeny colour, really, but, you know, it's fine. Um, Add some of these in. These only need to be very light. I'm just going to plop some of those in. You see how quickly I, I do this. It does not need to be. I'm just implying it by leaving a little gap there. I'm implying some of the, the breaking up of these of these tiles. But you see, I'm going to be covering this with shadow anyway. So I may well be coming back to cover some of these um, uh, at any rate. So it doesn't particularly matter. But you see, I've left a little bit of the colour underneath coming through uh, just to imply that there are there are elements of the, the roof tiles that have sort of broken up. OK. So yeah, just adding all this. A lot of this stuff, like these colours I'm painting in now, probably won't stand once I've covered the other things in. But I'm just... Just broadly adding things in that I think need to be there. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Leave those little. Okay, now, so I will dry this very quickly. Okay, now there's a few things I need to do before I do the, the shadow, which is going to be the... It, the shadow is, again, going to be the thing that brings this building to life. Um, now, I need to do this window here and a window here and a door here. Now, the door can just be very dark. I tend not to use black, so I've got ultramarine blue here that's, like, a bit messy anyway. I, as you can see by this palette, I virtually never clean this palette. Um, I've got the board on a slight angle. Hence why you can see everything's pooling in the bottom here because the, the entire board's on an angle. So I'm just going to give the, the door a dark colour, which again, I will probably come back and cover later. Possibly. Um, we've got some windows up here, or window sort of slats. I'm just going to give them a dark colour, but I shall come back and give them more definition if they need it. But it's useful to know before I put the wash on where these things are, because the pencil sometimes vanishes if you get, you know, a dark enough kind of wash on it. And then we've got windows. Now, windows, I'm going to make them, you know, the temptation is with windows is to make them blue, because they're sort of reflecting the sky to an extent. But it's a bit, sometimes it's not ideal, an ideal colour. But I'm just going to imply with a, a sort of lighty blue, leaving some little bit of gaps for various reflections and also just implying some of the leading in the window. You know, it, there's a lot of painting that's just implication. Now in front that needs to be darker because that is going to be cast in shadow. So I'm going to make that a darker kind of bluey grey without smushing the rest. I'm going to try and put that on. Okay. In fact I might add a bit more blue into that just the eye to casually see it's a, a window. We've got a window up here. Or, or something of that kind anyway. Uh, that's pretty good. 
it's pretty good. Um, there's a little bit of darkness in this the side of this window. So I'm just going to add that here into the wet paint. Now that's going to be very subtle, hopefully, uh, but it should uh, add a bit more character to that window. It looks a bit strong actually the way I've put it down, but we'll go with it. Right, let's dry again with the dryer. And do you see one of the nice things here is actually the paper's flattened out again, uh, which is good. So now what I'm going to focus on, we'll leave the figures to sort of last. Um, I'm going to put the shadow on. Now, the importance of this is the shadow might indicate to me, oh, I need to make the, the, the foreground, the, this grass at the front a bit a bit darker, perhaps. Perhaps something's a bit more intense. Yeah, very, very likely. But let's just start off with a colour for the um, uh, for the shadow. Now, this is full of green here. I don't really want green, but let's get some raw sienna and some ultramarine blue. Ooh, that's a nice green colour, which we don't want. So I'm going to add in... Some burnt sienna, and maybe a bit of yellow ochre, and then a bit more, a bit more ultramarine blue. Now that's quite a nice colour, but I prefer shadows to be a bit more grey. So there we go. I've added in more um, ultramarine blue there. Got quite a nice shadow colour there. Right. So now what I'm going to do is working working on the shadow. I'm going to work from left to right because I obviously don't want to putting my hand in, in anything, in any shadow. So I'm going to start here. So now we know the sun is casting the shadow here. Now I think that could do with being actually a bit darker, a bit... I'm going to bit, put a bit more ultramarine blue and a bit more burnt sienna because it's just a bit, I don't know, something about the shadow, it's a bit too green. I want to get it right before I put it down, but sometimes you don't know until you put down on the paper really. So those are just those, once again it's a bit green. That's a bit greyer. There we go, maybe that's better. To be honest it doesn't matter if the, the shadow slightly um, changes colour as we go along really. Uh, that adds can add a, quite a bit of interest. Now the shadow is cast onto the building its, itself, not just this side of the wall, but also onto the front of the building. Now you try and join your shadows together. This can be tricky, but try to keep this um, sort of bead of water going down uh, as best you can, because you want the shadow to, to just bleed sort of into itself, really, and all the colours that you use in the shadow mixed together. So I'm going to add a bit of, well, why not? I'm going to add a bit of uh, cobalt blue in here, you see, but not so little that you can't actually see. Um, so I'm going to change some of the tone of this shadow here as I go down, because, well, why not? I think it adds a bit of interest. I could even add a bit of yellow ochre again. So I've completely changed the shadow colour as you can see there. But I think that adds quite, that makes it quite interesting. A bit more ultramarine blue. So I'm, I'm making these decisions all the time as I'm, as I'm, as I'm painting. You know, I don't have a preconceived notion at this point of exactly what I want, but that's very dark at the bottom there, maybe too dark. So now I need to put a bit more, uh, let's add a bit more brown, a bit of burnt sienna here. You see this, and I think I've probably made this shadow a bit too crazy, but for the purpose of a tutorial video, I think that's quite interesting. Um, and you see I'm bringing in the shadow there, and I'm acknowledging the shapes that the shadow would cause on the facade. Okay, now we've also got this bit here, which doesn't need to be connected. Um, but that's, that feels about right. Okay, so we've got shadow in there, just a little bit of shadow there. I'm going to add, just to be annoying, another bit of darkness there. Okay, and I should have added that at the beginning. Okay, now another bit of shadow, I said the roof was going to have a bit more shadow to it, and there needs to be shadow along here, but not right to the edge. I do want to keep a little bit of lightness at the very edge, which I seem to have just painted over, but 
doesn't really matter. Um, so there we go. Okay, so that's a bit of shadow there that I think works reasonably well. I, I quite like the, the colour in between there. I need to make this a bit darker. Yeah. Now, there are a few bits here where, actually, there are you know, shadows being cast by a bit of brick, but I will come back and deal with that later. Um, as you can see, the building's very light, maybe too light. I might have to go back and add a bit of colour in later, but we can, we can fix that. So, on to more shadow. So, more ultramarine blue into this green mess I seem to have created. You know, that's fine. Um, so, let's do this other bit of the wall here. Now, most of this building's actually going to be in shadow. Really, that's very dark. Too dark. Okay, so I'm adding a bit of... Um, oh, that's too light. <laughs> if I keep doing these tutorials, ultimately I should hopefully learn how to paint watercolour. That's, uh, that's the idea. If I do these enough, I'll learn. But you can see I'm very, I quite like the variation there. Now, some people I don't think would like that, but you know, what does that matter? Okay, and going a bit more back into that original colour again, down here. You see, it's like I'm painting the side of a house. I mean, really, I'm painting the side of a chapel. But... Okay, now, interestingly, you've got some of the shadow bleeding onto this pillar here. And then, actually, there's a bit of light there, but then it's it's covered. So there's a little bit of light that pops out there, but then the rest of it... So let's just put a bit of grey there. rest of it, there we go. Nice grey colour there. So you see how sometimes these shadows really do just cover the whole building, effectively. But I can always go back, add in a few more interesting colours here and there. Um, I do actually need to add some interesting colours down here. Now, they aren't going to go for the full bit here, just somewhat of it. Careful of this, right, I don't want to paint the shadow into the person now. So I must leave their head. Negative painting, that's called. You know, parts of the painting that you're you're leaving um, now that needs to come down here like so and then join now well, this looks vaguely right it's probably completely wrong but it looks vaguely right to me and then that's that little bit of roof I've painted before now you could say why don't I just for example, paint this part of the wall along with this if it's the same shadow. It's it's because I, I, I don't want, you know, I want to have variation. I don't just want to have one load of colour, okay, all the way. So, in fact, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add a bit more of this. I mean, in fact, a bit of raw sienna rather than keep using yellow ochre. But actually, I need, I need the raw sienna. Now, here we go. So, um, so you can see... It's not quite as dark as that other bit, but that's fine. And I'm actually leaving a tiny gap. A tiny, tiny gap. Yeah. There we go. I mean, really, this next bit of building you can paint effectively like a house. I'm leaving, the, you can see I'm leaving the very tiniest gap to, to imply the difference between these sections of the wall. Because although they are all covered in, it is all in shadow, I I want to imply... Oh dear, I went into that person's head. I didn't mean to do that, but it's fine. So you see, now I've covered that bit much faster. Now I want to join... Well, I've still got time. I want to join in this section here with it. So again, that bit, but I'm leaving just a few bits of white just to imply the direction of these walls. So you see? Um, now, I'm going to have to add 
shadow, more shadow to the roof later, but I will do that later. You can see, now let's, let's add a bit more darkness now. Again, if we, we want to vary this texture a tad, now that's <laughs> way too blue. Let's see, all these other people doing tutorials online apparently know what they're doing, but I do not. Uh, and that looks a bit too light, but I, I love the variety of colours here. I'm going to add a bit more um, burnt sienna here when I go over the window, and you see I'm going completely over the window. I'm not going to worry about going over the window, I'm going to make it a bit darker as we go down. So you can still see the window. In fact, this whole area, this whole area, you see, even this roof, most of this roof is covered in shadow down here. Again, I'm leaving a few spots, and you may think, well, they're in shadow. Why shouldn't they be completely covered? The reason I don't is, is again, just a... It tells a bit more about the, the building if, if you don't do that, really. It, it, it allows the building to retain more of its, its shape, really. So... Adding that in so you can see shadow. I'm just going over the door because again, this is all in shadow. Excitingly, all in shadow. But I will leave a little bit there just to imply the shape of that. Um, this is again in shadow. A bit of brown there. To, you see, I'm trying where I can to keep some element of variety. Let's return to the colour on the first side. Yeah, I mean that's all right. I mean is it, you know, there's a lot of variation there, perhaps too much variation. What I'm going to do in this last section of shadow, I'm going to keep the colour much more uniform and then you can sort of see the effect of that. Okay, so let's add in a bit more raw sienna. Okay, so I'm just going to use this one colour, okay, and then you'll be able to see the sort of effect that that has. I'm going to, as I say, I'm going to leave a little line here, very subtle, okay. Now I know that's going down there, and then, so I'm just going to use this one colour. And you might say, actually, it looks far better using one colour, and you might be right. There we go. Certainly if you use one colour and there's no variation, it is a lot faster. Now I can't help myself, I'm going to have to add a bit of variation, I'm going to have to have a bit of blue here, just to bring it, I think, you know, bringing it a bit darker as you reach the, the bottom of the building, I don't know, just seems to make sense to me somehow. And then we can see it's almost creating the a nice silhouette of these architectural details as we get to the very bottom. Okay, now, there is the building in shadow. I think this colour in the middle probably is a bit too too much, but it's fine. I've done it now, so I can do nothing. Um, so we can see there we've got the, the building in a lot of shadow. Okay, there are other places, just a couple of little spots I've missed where I could do with putting some more shadow in, so... Um, again, just up here, just there, some shadow here and then this window little thing. There we go. Um, now, I also need to add a little blob of shadow along the, uh, the roof here. In fact, let me change brush. I haven't changed brush in a while and that's quite an exciting moment when one changes brush. Um, so... There we go. So yeah, this this building looks so. Oh, not sure. Did I do the right thing? Who knows? And I'm, I'm going to go above that little bit of uh, of white I've left in and just imply some shadow. Now this shadow is just ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. The colours I use constantly. Yeah, that looks all right. That doesn't look too bad. Okay, now let me dry it again, and then I'm going to add in a bit more detail.
Now, currently, I'm on for 25, 26 minutes. So, uh, I was aiming for this to be half an hour. It's probably going to be more like 40 minutes, even for a small painting like this, because I, you know, I can't leave it alone. Now, fortunately, the, uh, these windows have largely stayed intact, but I'm just going to add a little more detail to some of these areas where I put detail before that's kind of been erased by uh, the shadow. So, I got around these windows, uh, particularly around this door here, you know, to add a bit of shadow there. Um, there's a little bit of detail there. There's a little bit of further detail down here, because actually you've got a little thing coming down there, which, yeah. Okay, and I think I want to add a further bit of detail down this, to bring out the shadow of that side a bit more. Yes, okay. Um, but there are other places just over here that I could do with adding a bit more detail that I've taken away by painting the shadow on it, onto it. Um, oh yes, you get the idea. I might add just a little bit more on this window. Okay, now that's, that's all right. It's not too bad. Now the shadow seems very intense there. I could add just a bit more color to some of the, other, to the lighter bits. So let me just show you that. Now this building is very sort of sandy colored, but you can't obviously going on put loads of really thick paint onto all these sections that are light because you'll lose the quality of the light then. What I can do is I'm going to make a really very light wash with raw sienna here. Okay, very light, I hope. And I'm just, what I'm going to do is since some of these light sections, I'm just going to add the tiniest hint of this wash, okay? As you can see, I'm barely, this will dry even lighter. But as you can see, what it does is it just takes a bit more definition to the color of the building. Because it had gone a tad, well that's maybe a bit strong. Um, it had gone a tad sort of pale, okay? So, now, that hasn't, I think that's, that's improved the painting. Just that little touch, in my considered opinion. Now, one of the things I could do here is I could make the grass at the bottom very green, but actually I feel I feel like I don't want it. I think I want it to be a more yellowy sort of summary. I might add a little bit of um, green in, but actually I want this feel of, and I'm going to go around these figures as best I can because I need to. Um, so, you see there, I've added that in. Now I could bring in a little touch of green Okay, to mix in, but actually I quite like the idea of it being a really sort of hot summery day and the ground having sort of dried out and that's what we get here. Now I'm going to add probably a bit of stronger colour just towards the very bottom, just to add a bit of interest. Okay. There we go. Now I think that's probably a slightly more interesting than having just green. I mean, I could add a bit of green in so you can see what that looks like, but I just I add a bit of tuft of green, a hint of green over here, you see. And what I'm doing is dabbing that wet in wet. So there's hardly any green on this, but it's just a hint. And by putting it wet in wet, it means that it will kind of dissipate, so that green will be hardly there, okay? Now, let's uh, quick hair dry. Now, we've got these two walkers here, probably National Trust members. Um, who knows? Uh, now, what I'm going to use is some light red to do the, the, the sort of the head and flesh. So, I'm just going to put in... The heads here. I'm going to leave a bit of white on the edge of it for as a sort of a highlight. And then what shall they be in? I could do blue. Quite like the cobalt blue because it picks up the sky then. So let's do this person in. And I mix, I'm going to touch the red so it bleeds in a little bit. Okay, because that's absolutely fine. 
So, and I'm just going to imply they've got some kind of bag on the side there or something. And then got some shorts of some kind. Yeah, great. And then again, same color because this looks like a hot day, so they're in shorts. So I'm just going to very simply pull down some there and maybe an arm. Yeah, there we go. So that's one figure. Okay, now the other figure is doing slightly different colors. So let's have a, a more brown sort of top and then ooh, opposites. Let's do some blue denim -y sort of shorts or something, I don't know, not really matter. Okay, and then that's a little something. And then back to the light red. I always use light red for flesh. Now, really, I shouldn't really be using it for, for hair color, but perhaps these two were, you know, perhaps they don't have any hair. I don't know. Okay, uh, now the other thing I could do here is just adding a bit of detail on these um, these little barriers of this fence and a little bit of its sort of implied shadow going this way. So I need my shadow color, which is ultramarine blue and a bit of um, burnt sienna, more ultramarine blue to get darker. But just again, to just imply the elements of shadows there as they're walking up. Um, when they're dry, I could always always add a bit of you know shadow color to them. There we go. It's a little bit of shadow. Now we need the fences. So I will use a very not too dark. If you make it too dark, it'll jump out, which we don't want. So I'm just going to very. This is probably too dark. I'm just going to take a light color here, and I would ideally use a thinner brush, a rigger brush, but. I haven't brought one upstairs with me, so. And I'm just doing those little. Now, what we want is if we join these together, we want a really, really thin line. Okay. And this isn't the brush to do it, but, you know, and I'm not. Sometimes I don't even really join them. You know, they just. I just draw my brush across the paper. Now we can add a bit of further, just maybe a bit of depth around there, add a bit of interest to the sort of middle ground. Okay, like so, a bit of dry brushing. Okay, now that's pretty much, that could indeed be finished. I think the only thing I need to do is add my signature again with this with this brush that's far too large. So I'm going to use, you know, a relatively strong color. I'm going to use uh, light red. I'm just going to put, you know, you should always sign your work. Um, put my head in front of the camera again. This is far too big a brush. Okay, but you get the idea. So that is St. Catherine's Chapel in uh, Abbotsbury in Dorset. I notice things all the time while I'm talking. So for example, I just want to add a bit more shadow there. That's probably too much, but you get the idea. Uh, and I'm just going to add a few final finishing touches to just make this stand out just a, a little more, okay, on various elements that I think we could bring out a bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good, you get the idea. And just want to bring that in, maybe there, okay. But that's pretty much done. So I hope you have enjoyed um, watching the little tutorial. I'm intending to do a few more. If, if you've enjoyed it, please do put something, um, you know, in the comments or visit my Instagram page, which is ANW Watercolors. Uh, as a last flourish, let's take off the, um, the masking tape because that's always a bit of a, a fun thing to do um, because it, it creates a nice border. And I've actually done this in under 40 minutes, which is, I was pleased for a tutorial. Now, as you can see, we take that off, and there it is. We move that slightly into the center. There we go. So that is uh, a small painting of uh, St. Catherine's Chapel in Abbotsbury. I, uh, my um, 
sister and brother-in-law uh, used to live in Abbotsbury, so uh, we used to go there a lot, and I greatly enjoyed it, and I, I remember visiting this chapel very, very fondly. Um, and so there it is. Other things I would have done to maybe improve it, perhaps a little bit more colour on the building, but I think the nice thing is how the background does fade in, perhaps not having a, always doing a green, you know, a green grass to it, the drier grass I think works quite well there. Um, and I, I quite enjoyed painting that. So I shall be back again at another point with another tutorial and thank you very much for watching.